yesterday I made a video about Mouse Utopia um, experiment and on that same night when I went to sleep I just couldn't sleep I've been digging out more information I've done more research and I know you guys are sick and tired of me wearing the same thing so I just add something spicy just add my you know one of my keys and that's about it and um, yeah let's go and let's get this video sorted um, so the website that I just literally uh, went through and um, puzzle up more stuff more death information then the yesterday's video for you guys will see this the yesterday video will probably be like months so for me this is like the next day uh, for me depth information i have not solved all the problems but i'm still figuring out why or how so yeah um i'll put this link below and the article it's from return of kings what humans can learn from the mice utopia experiment now on the uh, website it overviews like you know those who have a bit bit of briefly um they have a bit of comparison of the video um you know to see like aluminum food sources or limited spaces um you know with different partners and everything uh population spike from 220 uh, no, um from eight mice uh, eight female eight male to spiking up on 315th day 2200 down to zero mice on the 600th day and um but at the same time, we get to have a limited information on the social behavior. And that's the video that uh, the social experiment, it doesn't involve much of it. There's a lot of uh, bizarre behavior that we get to get to see. And this video will cover the most of it. I try to make this shorter than the previous video, but I don't know because I don't have the timing clock right in front of me. But I don't know. It's, uh, let's see right now. Okay. So now I know what's the timing clock at the moment. Uh, not really. Okay. Um. So, when I read the article, it comes down, breaking down to um, different um, categories such as population, condensation, breaking down of gender roles, the beautiful ones, and of course, the withdrawn as well. So, I would like to, um, and one more is um, depopulation, that's also another one that's on the article. I would love to um, go overview on what they what's their um uh, what they've written on the article but also most of this what i'm trying to say is based on my experience my personal experience and what i see i get to see the world and why i'm very very fascinated about this topic this theory and the reason why i said that because i wanted to go right down to the roots of the problems and i've been involved too much of the red peer videos and that is something i do not want to talk about Now on the video, as you watched, or oh, if you haven't, okay, so it's pretty much they said uh, once they reach up to the 315th day, um, um, usually the both sexes, usually the female will get to this stage, is sleep, eat, and shit, all right? Um, see, for me to see this is uh, sleep, eat, and shit, I get to see the society is going to that way. Um, for example, I get to see one of my uh, friends who is a dentist. It's a very good social economic class. He has a high IQ, having a, one of the brilliant salaries at his age. He's like, you know, he's less than 30 years old and he struggled to find a match. You know, like, um, I think we're living in a busy era uh, with ourselves, with social media or simply just work overloaded. He often push himself out to go to the club or meetup.com to find a friend or perhaps uh, a girl as well. Um, so if he's been trying to do that for over the years, but at the same time, he, and he knows he's withdrawn, but he always wanted to go out and try to meet people, but he realized he couldn't meet anyone. Uh, on my birthday, which is New Year, he did not know about this. He wanted to call me out and go, um, go with him to watch the fireworks on the New Year's Eve. But I was really shocked to amaze he's gone to that route because he's smart, he's intelligent, and don't get me wrong, he's a you know he's not he's a decent looking guy. Um, but yeah, um, with John, I get to see on the article he mentioned um, the the younger the new generation it is is a lot more withdrawn um, comparison to their parents right and or grandfathers right if you look at it through and um 
this could, could you know, on, on the mouse utopia, um, I'm not sure what causes it, but they said in Japan, this is pretty much uh, most likely like Japan, I was sure, because they most likely never step out of the house, they'll sleep, eat, and things to do that. And uh, this is the funny thing, right? I've, I've um, spoken to Dan about uh, when I went to China, you know, I get to see a lot of beautiful Chinese girls. I'm, I'm Chinese, so I, I get to see a lot of beautiful Chinese girls in Australia. Uh, but when I go to China, there's no beautiful Chinese girls. And I, I asked him, I was like, um, where's all the beautiful Chinese girls? Like, you get to see them left, right and center in, you know, in CVD. And he said to me, well, they already got knocked up by rich folk already. So they would be kept at home. So all they do is sleep, eat and shit and sex at the same time. So that... To hear that, and I hear another friend of mine, you know, I wanted to understand what his Chinese lifestyle is like, and he, his name is Cloyd. Um, he mentioned about, like, people in China will literally, would never do any activities. They'll pretty much just sleep, eat and shit, um, work, and look after the family. So they have no time going out. They're too busy with their lifestyle, I think, workload and everything. So for this work, with withdrawn... All I can say is more and more, for Japan, I don't know what made them get to that stage, but I think it's that it's a lot easier lifestyle just to eat, sleep and shit, um, rather than go out working overload, um, understanding the cost of living, everything's going up. Um, but that is something I need to touch on more. Um, now the beautiful ones, um, as you can see, on the 315th day, um, the females and the males, mostly the females, are personally uh, personal grooming, or um, you know, just pretty much just grooming, just eat, sleep, eat, and shit. All right. But if you comparison to today's world, and I mentioned this on a previous video, and I'll mention this again. All right. I get to see a lot more pretty girls than it was when I was a kid. There's way more um, girls. Um, um, you know, their personal hygiene, makeup as well, dresses after dresses after dresses, like very attractive dresses or dresses, very sexual appealing as well. Um, I get to see more of that than ever before. Uh, for this topic, I don't want to dig in any deeper because... Because, because I don't know where to draw a line to not to be biased on this topic because the beautiful one topic is very very biased um, com especially towards the men's movement uh, red pill and as well MGTOW and if you go through a lot of videos they always talk about this very negative but I wanted to be um, not to be biased I wanted to balance uh, both way and uh, finding out what is the confusing side I think um, I think male and female are, are, are struggle or confuse how to meet or how to get with each other um, especially for men uh, I think women can identify uh, who's an arsehole or who's a fuck boy or who's as well a good boy or a nice boy or this and that it's a lot easier for female to identify that but for men to identify for female holy moly we have no idea how we're going to um, you know uh, you know we don't know because we use our judgment right our, because girls nowadays, they have, you know, outfits that we see and I'm pretty sure you, you girls will see cat calling or being perv. Because we don't know, um, what are you? Like, we don't know, are you single? We don't know, are you taken? We don't know, are you a bad girl? I don't know, are you a whore? We don't know, alright? And, you know, and the, to us... We get so confused because now all you girls all look the same. Now that is the biggest problem for men to uh, to see that, and um, it's confusing. We don't know what to do. Instead, we try to be materialism. And I, I remember I was watching uh, David uh, Capel's um, comedy skit, and I'll link that below because it, it summarized the most brilliant idea um, about. Um, you know the, the woman's outfit and things like that because we see it um, straight away um, we view things differently because w come on ladies let's be honest right could you tell 
that girl is single or taken or she's looking for a partner. I don't think you can. And we guys, do you think we can? We even worse, my friend. All right. So for me, we have no idea. So, so guys will go for an easy route, you know, try to pick up a skill or may as well or buy an expensive car to draw attention, to draw the ladies or something like that. And, you know, we have to do this sort of stuff because we have no idea what's a single girl, who's a single girl, or because, you know, and I'm pretty sure most guys will have to go through the PUA and try to approach a girl. And the girl's always pulled out the boyfriend card. But we're not sure if the boyfriend card is it real or not. And that's why it creates a lot more problem. Um, and realize, us men realize, damn, that's too much work um, to understand or get a woman nowadays. Or girls nowadays, right? So, it, it, it's a pretty difficult. So, I'm pretty sure the most YouTube here will get pretty... Um, confused because they see all these pretty pretty fine ass mouses they're all grooming all the time looking great looking on point sexy as hell but it, it's something that it's it's difficult now it's creating a lot more um you know it, it's difficult it, it's really difficult to find a mate even right now you turn on the tv right now i know i've only like i said i i, I post this on the video and I'll say this I only made this video on 5th of January and today is the 7th of January if you turn on your TV right now on January or December or whatever the season you what you see on your TV is eHarmony or dating website but the, 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 the reality is that Tinder is a lot more popular than that you know to getting more results or anything but you know what I've heard is like you know eHarmony you know this and that but this is how frustrated in this generation we are in today like even myself I have no idea I can't tell what's a high or low or you know a middle social economic like I don't know if she's poor I don't know if she's intelligent I don't know is she a whore I'm sorry I don't we guys we don't know we don't know because you know nowadays you go to the shops anyone can buy an outfit that looks sexy or looks great or looks smart or look look like this or look like that and also there's another problem for guys as well is and i'm and i made this video guys and girls as well like there's triggers you know each time you you know when your girl wears certain clothes it triggers us and we don't know how how to control ourselves sometimes we just stare at it or perp or cat corny or we just don't know how to behave and I don't know like even you know that's what men's are going through and I'm pretty sure girls will go through the same thing as well um, and I'm not gonna talk about that topic for when the girls want the uh, triggers but it's, it's it's driving us crazy we don't know which one is the right one I don't we don't know we just there so I could understand why Japan just physically frustrated and just become sexless stay in their room or you know just couldn't do anything and the mouse as well you know they got all these alpha males um chasing all these fine ass honey groom ass uh, mouses but at the same time when they try to you know to be a fatherhood or be a, a familyhood and things go turn out pretty bad but in the reality in the world a lot of alpha males or those who are bad boys try to um, you know commit of the you know familyhood or fatherhood uh, they're usually not willing to go through that route and i mentioned down on the trap on the video it's about um baby trapping girls were left to down to no choice because they have life goals and they have to you know they have certain age they have certain target um you know they have career driven they have family driven and also you know there's baby rabies uh, i don't know if you guys know about this but when girls hit their 30s or maybe late 20s or even like late 30s around that period there's baby rabies like they can be career driven and but things change there's too much choices but the thing about guys is like women's uh, or girls they're a lot more mature when they are younger than uh, us men men i don't know 10 or 15 years to be mature so for us to be a familyhood of two because we have no idea what is girls what are they like like it's very frustrated at the moment and and and, and plus you know the society you know will go through our you know like news or too much gossip or songs it's too much gossip telling us doing some bad influence stuff so right now it's a huge 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 confusion and i think you kind of understand why a lot of 
men or men's right are frustrated and they go really against about this topic because they just say, yeah, they're the one, the feminism make them like this, blah, 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 blah. But actually, we are confused. We don't know how to talk to a woman to a way that seems like it's dateable because they might play the boyfriend card saying that, yeah, I have a boyfriend. Because there's too much games to go through. But David Capel, uh, his video, I'll put a link, like I mentioned before, I'll put the link down below. And it's, 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 it, I know it sounds corny as hell, but that's what guys, you know, just, we don't know how to react to it. And plus, you know, I'm pretty sure most men who got to the mature stage and wanted to start a family, but man, they see the environment, what is going on with, you know, female has so much rights and, and, and the environment is like this. And it's not right to bring up a child in that environment because divorce rates is going up, you know, broken family is going up, single mothers is going up, men is going down, you know, people who's going homelessness, you know, say living on the street, you know, those are coming from whether domestic violence or, um, you know, divorce, those are the high numbers of staying on the street, you know, pay, it, it, there's a lot of problems and I try not to get too men's right on this topic because it's it's very confusing um but yeah uh if you got to watch that david capel's uh video watch it when this whole segment finish all right guys all right let's go to the next topic the article tried a comparison in certain countries uh, East Easter Island. What happened to the people there is like a small little island. Um, rapidly, pe people are just rapidly mating, and it's like what has happened on the mouse uh, behavior, uh, experimental. And it's interesting to know if you're like a small little island and you feel of all the people, and some of people start to the shortage of food or shortage of things like that, and they start to be aggressive or kill one another, um, eat one another, and um, you get to hear that sort of um, talk when you hear from other tribals, um, especially those who are Pacific as well, you get to hear that as well. Um, they just said there's shortage of food and everything, but in this Mouse Utopia is a different story. You have unlimited food and water. So that part I, I need to do a more further investigation, but I guess it's like everyone is the same place. It's generation and generation build that social problem to the stage. They just burst out saying there's too many of us. There's no need uh, for that. And um, that is something I need to figure out, okay? So the countries they look into is Japan, all right? Uh, Germany, um, for those who doesn't know, Japan and Germany has, Germany outrun um, Japan, the lowest birth rate in the world, and therefore, you know, on my previous video, there's a reason why Germany wanted to open the borders for the Syrian refugee. Japan, you guys already know. Uh, Spain, um, don't know much about Spain. I know South Korea is declining birth rate. America, and they did a bit off about Australia. That's my country, Australia, that's what I'm saying right now. Spain, it kind of makes sense. I don't know what's their population, but I think they're in a small land, a high density of population. So that is something I know. But uh, the whole article mentioned and comparison on how this goes through. So. Especially when they go through like, um, you know, in it is specifically targeted in uh, Germany, right? Germany, Germany is one of the, um, the smartest, intelligent people in the world and, you know, has one of the best technologies in the world and as well, one of the successful running country in the EU, alright? That is something you cannot deny. So it says, in Germany, some part of the city has imbalance of people than other parts of uh the cities, or I don't know what they call it, province or states, or whatever what they call it, uh, especially towards the rural area. Now, there's more people in certain cities instead of uh, rural area. I think this is a problem, a worldwide problem for each every single country. There's uh, more rural people uh, going out from the countryside or mountainside, whatever you name them, um, going to the city because that's where the money is, that's where surviving is. But in Germany, apparently, it's a huge, huge, huge Im 
balance at the moment. So there's way more people, capital um, people living in the cities, um, big cities. So yeah. Okay, this is from my experience, alright? So you have all the jobs and everything in certain part of um, Germany, okay? Uh, from my experience, only who lived in, in Sydney and Melbourne, I could see, um, if those that doesn't know, Sydney is the biggest city. Our uh, capital city is Canberra. Second biggest city in Australia is Melbourne. So I only live in these two cities. I haven't lived in anywhere else in Australia. What I could see is um, I could see Melbourne. All the jobs are located in the city, where Sydney is trying to do a different approach. Sydney is trying to spread the jobs out wide because the city in city Sydney. It's very dense. There's nothing they can build on. So they try to push the jobs out in uh, North Sydney, St. Leonard, Chatswood, Redfern, Olympic Park, Botany Bay. And as well, they try to create a second airport and a second city, which is Parramatta. Um, I, I grew up most of my life in Parramatta and I could see a huge change in Parramatta. So if we put this utopia experimental, Melbourne, if... If the way how it is, when I'm staying in Melbourne, if, the, if things are still kept the same way in the next 50 or 80 years, Melbourne will be having a lot of social problems um, with this whole um, mouse utopia experiment. But Melbourne is very wide. There's a lot of room to grow uh, for Melbourne City. Um, apparently, Melbourne City is... Melbourne, the city, is like one of the biggest in the world. I That's what I overheard. Um, correct me, I'm wrong. Um, but also, we, we're facing the same problems like the rural or towns that uh, there's a ghost towns now. There's no jobs over there. Um, rural, the people in the rural are a lot more taking on drugs. Um, there's unemployment. There's nothing there in the rural, basically. So that's why I say you can see the same thing ongoing. On the article uh, on breaking down of gender roles, right? The alpha males fight, you know, fight for their status, land, or maybe something else, right? Where the losers or the non-competitive are withdrawn. Okay, I get to see this um, in the real world. I get to see this in the workforce where jobs are getting more competitive. Uh, with largely job group interviews, um, with different multiple rounds of job interviews, and a lot more companies are are putting their job advertisements and struggle to find the right one. I think they have a high, high KPIs, high turnover, and they wanted to find the right person. So to be that person to get a job in today's world is a lot difficult than before. Um, I go through job interviews where I'm surrounded by 25 people and now I know you guys, oh, that's nothing because you go through waves after waves, there's like certain times, certain ways, certain schedules, different waves of um, locating people and you know jobs are getting tougher with the KPIs and with their work ethics as well, high turnover and as well the salary decreases as well. So there's another problem. So, you know, each each member, you know, those who get in the job, right? Each member of them getting the job uh, after, you know, after probably a year within the company, so they can they allow themselves to move up the ladder or move up to a higher role position. The hierarchy, everyone wants to be on top of each other. Um, by doing that, uh, whether they be, you know, you can do the old traditional way, like good, good work ethics. Or as well, they'll use another technique, which is backstab or gossip or lack of work ethics, or perhaps passing their, all their jobs down below and do nothing. I get to hear that from my mentor about this in the corporate world. Once that person gets up 
to that position, certain position they wanted to get in the high position, they will they will change their mood and they'll power trip workers beneath them. Now workers will leave the job with mental health problems because they just lost the competition. So what I'm trying to say in that sense of an alpha male fighting or alpha female, whatever you call them, all right? Um, if you if you if you put a bunch of us, one of us wants to be a leader, all right? Or once of uh, all of us are the same level, but once we reach to that level, we started to treat people bad or or put them down or everything like that. And when they do that, obviously. Um, they want to take in control of the team, right? Um, or as well, they wanted to make them drive even harder. But there's no personal, no, there's no personal thing behind them because if you do the power trip, if you treat them like slave and make them work even ten times harder, those guys who above you get a bonus or perhaps job security as well. So they don't get a job sack. So that is the power trip game, how it actually work. Now, I try to look at, into this, into, um, into another way of an alpha male. Now, I'm pretty sure, um, if you look on the video, the alpha male will want the good looking girls and the good looking girls and things like that. Now, this topic may come across as a red pill and meek tail, all right? I'm sorry about it, but I have to take this out because it's part of the video on the social problem on the mouse utopia experiment and I'd like to talk more about so in today's world in the alpha males uh, this relationship all right a relationship alpha males all right or alpha females um, with, um, um, yeah it's include um, LGBTQIA community as well and as well heterosexual okay I'm not excluding them as well um, they know how to speak to the opposite sex uh, with their high successful rate on dating um, with their repartee mouth. Now, repartee mouth is that they're good with words, they know how to use keywords, they're smart, they know how to think with their feet, um, to learn, to grab a good conversation, or know how to talk, basically. That's repartee. And um, they create a texting game, right? They're good at texting game as well. They go with their mouth, they go with a texting game. Knows how to stimulate the opposite interests or their sexual as well. So the, the alphas, they're really good at that. Um, they're really, really good at that. But when you see the alpha, a male or female in today's world, they have multiple partners, uh, casual into uh, you know casual intercourse as well. They aren't interested in getting into being uh, a familyhood, whether it's a motherhood or familyhood or being a father or being a mother, um, so on. As my previous video, I've mentioned about baby trapping. Now, a woman who is a sick and tired, finding the right man that's willing to settle down. Uh, when she meets a, a man, potentially he, she thinks, or he thinks, or I can't say because it's heterosexual, they will use their last resort. Uh, use, this this will mainly be female. Uh, they will use a last res uh, resort to trap a man to order to have him in her life for so forever. I've spoken about this uh, with my landlord about this baby trapping because I'm 27. I don't know much about. You know, his generation. And he's been telling me baby trapping is a very common thing, all right? Um, order to secure the family, or to secure the man, or maybe perhaps financial. Now, I'm not going to get in too deep with that because that's more of a red pill and a big tail video. Um, it's a very common thing. And when I see that and I say, oh dear, that is a huge major, major factor of divorce then. Bloody hell. Um, but yeah, um, so... You have that, right, um, and you often hear on the news or news article, on videos, like, you know, there's a baby trapping or um, planned pregnancy, putting a lot of guys in pressure where they didn't want it in the first place. And at the end of the video, on my previous video, I said something about it. Be cautious what you do, uh, whatever, what sort of sex uh, behavior they can get into, because um, girls, they have... Uh, a plan, a life goal plan that they kept into. There's a promise that they have to keep into. And if they realize time is drying out, they'll do whatever they can to submit it to that life goal. Okay, so um, let's move on to the end of this topic. Um, okay, so um, 
So, you often hear good guys finish last or perhaps nothing at all. So, so you got the alpha who knows how to get stuff, knows how to do stuff, and knows how to get everything. But when it comes to good guys or finish last, perhaps doing nothing. So what I'm trying to say, um, the guys who lost the battle for the mice, or those who are the mice who were withdrawn, they kept it with themselves. They do things with themselves. They got out of this competitive, this whole game thing. Um, they just go on their own. They sleep eating shit. That's pretty summarized what I'm trying to do right now. Okay. Um, and it's a it's it's a it's a huge problem because my landlord said the same thing yesterday. It's, it's like if you with a bunch of your girls or a bunch of your your boys, you know, same sex, right? Bunch of girls, there's no drama, right? But if there's a good looking guy in a, in in your girlfriend's group and you brought you put your boyfriend in, those girls will try to do something. Um, couldn't control themselves. Same with guys as well. If if there was a bunch of guys and there was and I brought a hot, good-looking girl, and these guys they're thirsty, or these these my girlfriends are all thirsties as well. All right, and it creates drama. It creates competition. You create a lot of backstabbing, stab, or just lust or love or something going on. So that's what I'm trying to say. Everyone try to fight on top to be the alpha male in that scenario, right? If we put that scenario in a real life, right? Then everyone has to fight for it, all right? The beautiful ones and everything. And at eventually towards the end, then the friendship dies out and you don't trust one another. When I made the Nokia video, I knew that we human beings, we don't like each other. Um, that is something um, maybe off the topic, but it's along the line of this topic. We are very judgmental, just based on you know their looks when we see someone, uh, based on their looks or their economic status, or perhaps jealous of their social media, having all the attention, all likes, with the awesome, with the awesome life. So that could work if there's a girl, one girl surrounded by all the guys, or one good-looking guy surrounded by all the girls. I think we'll be judgmental, or we'll be creating hate towards each other. Okay. And don't get me wrong, I, I've done the same thing, and thanks to social media, I've done the same thing in the past, and I know my behaviour in the past as well, I'm not saying I'm perfect. Um, and thing, thanks to social media, making things even worse, having the aura power, power in your profile with likes and comments is addictive, right? Uh, wanting to have more, you wanted to have more likes and more things like that but at the same time you created negative people trying to tear you down with their jealousy social media the way how people communicate we get the message wrong the way how we decode the message the best way to communicate is to face to face or perhaps phone to phone and i mentioned about this on a nokia video about it and as well um you know um uh, I've mentioned about this on my previous video as well, saying that like, you know, like social media does terrorize people and things of that way. For example, my sister, one of her classmates, who just, who's 13 years old, uh, who dressed like a clubbing girl and, um, you know, have a good looking and this and that, and she gets like 200 likes. And you just start to question yourself. It's very addictive to have this, like, having this like game and everything like that. Now this, and we're coming to the last bit, all right? This is the information that we get from the mice. So we, um, I've covered the ones that has been isolated, not being socialized, or those who are fighting, and um, you know, those who have unlimited foods, or those who are like, you know, the birth rate declines. Now let's go to the birth rate declines right now. But it's under the article of breaking down of the gender, all right? So mice, uh, female mice, they look good. Um, they can have the male, the alpha male, um, competitive. But after, uh, but after you know, uh, the genders. Uh, something that on the article he does mention is that it get confused on the genders, and there's a lot of um, same sex um, activities going on with the mice activities on the 315th day. Um, with this whole competition and everything, they started to get confused. And you could kind of, I don't know how we're going to translate that in today's world. 
that is something I don't want to touch about, but that's what they try to say. 315 day, they're all heterosexual, and after that, things, social problem, and same-sex um, couples started occurring as well. And one of the things that amazed me the most is female mice couldn't look after the baby uh, in full terms, right? For, to look after the baby to full term is probably like 25 days, right? Uh, it's either the female mice will uh, cannibalism with their baby or just couldn't sustain the baby in full term. Alright, on the article it mentions there's an infant side. There's a huge statistic in Australia in the infant side where children are being killed in um, family domestic violence. 50% of the child deaths are, are killed with their mother's hand, right? So the mother's hand who deliberately, who drowned in or just brain damaged to kill the child. And um, when, when there's, there's four article links um, when it comes to Australia that there's four links that we heard on the news. We hear this on the news, all right? We see here on the news that did, you know, um, mother or parents neglect their child, mother burned a child to death, father or father microwave the child to death, killing the child for revenge of their partner, um, and so on, so on, so on. Some these are the sort of stuff that we get to hear on our news, and we started to question ourselves: Are they cuckoo or something else? But what we can see from that to the you know with the whole experiment into video, it kind of makes sense, right? If you know, um, I've mentioned this: if a female mice knew there was an option of taking emergency pills, or you know, a, a male right, m mice has condoms or birth controls, they will take that route instead of killing each other or eating each other or leaving the baby to death and when I type this down and I'm, I've started to realize well you look at the mice world it's uh, the same sex is going on people are fighting each other and at the same time I didn't mention about this mice eat each other as well um, or kill each other all right kill each other or eat each other and that is the same thing with um, when I went, when I did a vlog on going to organic farm, right? Madeline, uh, who mentioned about it, is saying that um, the chickens that we eat is the caged chicken, right? They have to cut off their beaks, so their beaks is like really pointy, right? So they cut it off to make a blunt. And the reason why they cut it blunt is because you you put them in um, congested space, like because the cage is like literally. Um, Apparently, it's I think it's like two A4 papers, so you have like two three chickens in one cage, and that's how they feed for the rest of their life. Then, if you leave the chicken beak on, or if if it regroup back, they will started to fight each other and kill each other and eat each other. So, when you look at this confined little space with large population. It, it, it creates a lot of um, hate, you know, especially um, if there's a male and a female ones, right? And it, 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 same, it, it happens the same thing with uh, a lovebird. I know lovebirds, so uh, those a lovebird is, they look the same, you can't tell the sexes of female or male. So if you're a homeowner, right, if you brought two lovebirds into a cage, two males, over time, they will start to fight and kill each other off because they realize it's two males, right? So, to take even further consideration about this topic, spacing. Imagine this room, this is a small room, imagine there's three, four us guys, or maybe two guys and two females, and we begin to have babies. So, this is pretty much like we're going back to the mice game, right? Right? Uh, bit. I think we'll go crazy. I think we'll be started to. It's a way of killing each other to find more space, and more space is territory, right? Your own kingdom. 
It's rather to be shared. That is something I need to look for. <laughs> Spacing. So you get to see this, right? Um, on the other hand, I, I tried a comparison to this in the real world. So I, I mentioned about the four articles that they mentioned about burning and killing the child or this and that, right? Whether it's from the female hand or the mother hand or domestic violence or this and that, or family domestic violence. I can't say domestic violence anymore because they changed the wording now. Family domestic violence, that's what I'm learning. But on the other hand, on my class studies, all right, this is based on my class studies, I was shocked to hear a mental health condition after giving birth to a child. Now, um, the mother will suffer maternal depression, eternal and ten no depression, post natural depression, or sudden infant death syndrome. I was shocked to hear mothers are not wanting to look after their newborn child, and apparently this is really true. This is um, what is actually going on, or even touch the child, and often leaving the child neglect to the point they're dead. So this is a serious matter. This is a real. This is um, apparently it says one out of seven mothers, new mothers, uh, will we'll get into that stage, or one out of ten. So I've covered this whole topic. I've covered even more depth than my previous video because my previous video I've just literally just watched the video on the day and I did not know what was going on, and I. On that night, I tried to, to unfold more of this um, topic about it. I had to skip my breakfast. Um, I had to I haven't drank water or anything. Wake up, literally just type all the way through. Um, I'm supposed to be swimming by now, but this is how amazing how I compared this whole thing into my my, my personal experience and what I've heard, what I've seen, what I've learned. And as well, this article as well. Um, it, it, it brought me a lot of tension. It brought me even deeper to understand more. Um, but what fascinates me a lot more is if you live in a small, confined environment with large population, high density like Spain, Germany, and as well, Japan, Korea, there's a lot of problems going through. Um, one thing that I, I need to know, how about Indonesia? You know, Indonesia is pretty big as well. Or Vietnam, or Thailand. Um, but I think Indonesia will be on the list because Indonesia is one of the highest population. I think it's, it's top one, top 20 in the country. Yeah, top 20, yeah. Um, I'm still trying to figure out. Um, I started to realize the video that I made in the past, uh, trying to draw lines drawing the dots on this video so I'm, I'm getting other materials of my videos to draw this big picture um, and I'm starting to learn a lot more and more and more I'm trying to dig out even more so I'm think I'm getting I'm getting closer each time I'm making this sort of videos but at the same time I know you guys not even bother watch this video because it's a bloody 30 minute long by now yeah something around there or 25 minutes so yeah, that is the video. I uh, will try to keep you guys updated if I have something new about this video. Um, yeah, I'm glad that I'm on holidays. I'm glad that I have me time to absorb all this or else I'll be more focused on my studies. So I just hope things will go well. Anywho, comments below. Let me know. One of the things that I didn't mention about is the spacing. And uh, when I finished the video, I had a bit of... Um, have a second thought on making the spacing. Now on the Mouse Utopia, obviously um, there's unlimited food, water, and as well women and males, right? In in the course, right? But it's small confined spacing, and they build like uh, multi-level, like mini uh, miniature apartments as well for mice to live in as well. And I've just done a bit of research, and it says right. Small confined environment, it's only great for individual person, right? Um, and as well, it's not great for, you know, um, elderly or those who want to start a family or even with young children as well. Because I remember I was watching a video about, you know, what's the housing estate is like in Japan, right? In Japan... And, and I watched the video and 
you know, it, it's very, very bizarre. Like everything has to be folded, you know, folded bears or folded furniture. It's just, it, it, per square meter, it's like precious. It's like money. And I, and I was amazed to look at that style. But to put my shoes living uh, in Japan, and could I imagine myself um, just pretty much it's like, you know, could I imagine myself living that sort of estate, right? I know when I watch the video, right, I don't have the correct measurements or anything, but what you see right now, because this camera is wide lens, right? So you can see the door, and you can see from the other side. And when I watched the, um, the Japanese, you know, those guys on the vloggers, when they see their house, it actually is a bit narrower than this, and um, probably down to there. And it has one bedroom, a kitchen, a bathroom, um, you know, like a, a laundry and a sectress, yada, yada, yada. It's actually a bit smaller than this. And that's a lot of um, housing estate is like in Japan. And this sort of housing is very, very popular, you know, in today modern world society, such as, you know, um, on the article that I just read, it's more popular in those who are, are very, very expensive near the city, right? There's more and more popular um around the world like building all these apartments high-rise buildings uh specialized in one bedrooms especially as very very small confined environment and it mentioned there's a lot more social problems um those who grew up in um you know just family settings as well um studies has been shown that kids who goes to school who lives in confined uh, small environment uh, most likely uh, have a uh, one could go great on these grades or as well drop out as well and um, you know it's it's perfect for my age 20s um, but it's not good for 30s 40s or young people or those who want to start a family or especially those who uh, want to go elderly now it was a crip scheme going through the um, you know, for the, um, you know, for the, what I've researched. And he mentions that I think when people tend to stay a lot closer with confined environment, there's no privacy. Um, like you can't be left alone, do your thing. Um, there's no spacing, there's no social activity because everything what you do Everyone's participating. For example, if I watch a TV, TV's down there. If I wanted to do some of my kitchen, people can see me from a distance away. Or perhaps if I'm going to go to the toilet, I know they can't see me through the doors, but it's literally like a meter or two meters away. Like everything is very close by and very, very narrow, confined environment, very, very small. And I felt like it's probably like very, very bugging us and we have trouble of sleeping as well. Um, we tend to stay out of focus, we're not as a lot, um, there's a lot to absorb in, in one small confined area, whether it's your uh, family members is um, talking and while you try to do your studies or your work, you just cannot help to listen because it's just a distance away, like pretty much a meter or two meters away. Where, you know, like if you live in this house, there's a multiple rooms and multiple walls and it creates a lot of like, um, you know, a barrier and you have your own time, your me time. And for me, I actually used to live in that sort of estate, uh, but not as narrow what I just mentioned before, but something along the line, right? I used to live in that sort of state and I constantly having arguments with my parents, right? And you know, it's too much gossip, you know too much what's going on because once they're over the phone, you can hear everything. Um, and it's, it's, it, it creates a lot more problems than rather than, you know, obviously those who live in the city or those who are, it's very small confined environment. It's a lot cheaper to, to have a small room uh, instead of having a big room or anything like that because it's not affordable. And for me um, to go through that website to understand that narrative of, like, you know, very, very small confined spacing, that which is something I can relate to. And for me, even though I live in a small room upstairs that you can see, you know, on my videos, so it's such a small room, but at least I have my freedom. Like I can have like, you know, my this 
dining table. Look at this dining area. It's that big kitchen. is big. You know, the TV's down there. Or, you know, if downstairs I can do my workout. And for upstairs, I just do a bit of computing or just go sleep. That's what I do. Um, I felt like I'm a lot more happier if I have that sort of um, lifestyle. But if I could, couldn't imagine myself if there wasn't, you know, dining table or or downstairs or kitchen or the TV if I could imagine myself like maybe this small room here is like like if this room here is like pretty much it's like um because upstairs where I live is like there's three rooms right so if I can imagine here is like kitchen toilet dining room in this small confined area I think I'll be a lot more um not not as happy as before right I'll definitely, it's, it's something got to do with spacing, uh, after all. Um, it creates uh, that sort of uh, impact. I did not know how much it created that much impact until I've read through that article. And that's about it. And uh, I think I've covered most of the areas and still need to figure out more. Um, 